Well, we're, we're out to take a few um, landscape, cityscape type photos, a few panoramas, maybe um, some images that we can stitch together. And um, we've rolled up here to Mount Victoria here in Wellington to find that um, we've, we've changed our situation somewhat um, because I've racked on the 500mm lens to take some shots of a building that's caught fire over in the CBD. And uh, looks as though the fire brigade might have that under control now, but we got a few great little shots while there were, was some um, flames coming out there. And um, it just shows with photography, you just have to be Johnny on the spot. And uh, that's with anything. You've, um, you know, it's using the light, using the occasion, um, using the, the, the fact that um, maybe there's um, some sort of um, um, situation that's going on like we have with the fire and being able to adapt quickly. This is a digital um, SLR and it's a Nikon D300 and uh, it um, has a big long lens on it at the moment but ordinarily I'd, I'd probably have something like a, an 18 to 250 whereas um, this is a 150 to 500 and it's image stabilised and it's a pretty adaptable sort of camera. Um, in fact it's a hell of a lot of fun, you can do, do most anything with it. It's not normal that I use a lens this big other than for my bird photography or um, for sports or something like that. You know, up here on Mount Vic, generally speaking, I'm um, using something a hell of a lot smaller and a little bit more mobile and um, something that um, you can handle and um, hand hold a little bit more effectively too. So this is, this is just a little bit of um, recording of history. Um, and that's what photography is all about as well, recording history, um, making sure that you know, the elements of uh, our city and, and anything that's around gets you know, recorded properly. This is um, a little shot that we can get down here that's you know, of, a, of a boat going across the harbour with, the, um, with a lot, lots of lovely specular light there. And I can get in really close with this, um, this lens and um, got a few really neat shots just a simple filler sort of shot it's a bit glary today um, ordinarily I'd be up here at first light, last light um, not so much in the middle of the day when the sun's so high a bit squinty um, but generally um, I would close um, use my exposure compensation and uh, close down a stop so I'd under underexpose by one f stop at the very least if not two uh, especially when you're shooting into the light um, that way you'll get definition in the shadows and, and hopefully the highlights as well. About to do a little lens change and uh, we've got a, a fairly interesting um, little northerly going so uh, you, wouldn't def you definitely wouldn't change your, your lens in into the wind because you'll end up with dust or whatever on your chip. So um, I try and get down as low as possible um, into my bag first so I'm all prepared to get myself going and uh, Hopefully I put the lens in there, I did, and uh, I will get this one out, and this lens is downwind as well, and so hopefully I'll get myself capped and everything all sorted, which is really important, so um, it all happens really, really quickly, just check that there's no dust on my lens, because I wouldn't like that, and I'm just going to clip that in, and that's all a matter of seconds. Now what I do then is I go into my menu, and I go clean image sensor because most of the new cameras have these and I'll go clean now and I'll go oh okay and we're all done now some of the cameras have clean image sensor on shutdown or startup um, I would tick that button now I can set to and uh, take a few little shots of the city with an 18 to, to 250 Sigma lens which is my favorite yeah beautiful fine day. I'm reducing my ISO from 500 ISO which I had with the big huge tonking lens um, down to 200 which will give me better quality and I can hand hold and with the smaller lens um, I'm still able to get a very good depth of field and a good shutter speed to boot and I'm still under exposing by one stop. That's important because it's very glary out there. And what we'd like to see in this little scene is a boat go straight through the middle here somewhere because it's a bit bland at the moment, there's no real central point of interest. But you know, looking over there, that's, that would be the area that I would um, normally take photos in and that fire set certainly buggered it up. Yeah, lots of smoke, 
um, and there's not too much way of getting rid of that later. Ordinarily, um, I wouldn't be shooting at this time of the day, um, but you can shoot, um, especially on a blue sky day, uh, but you can shoot some, some good um, panoramas um, if you expose correctly. Um, one of the reasons that I shoot on RAW is that RAW is an, um, a, a file that has all its information on it, and if you expose it correctly, um, you can bring things back later in, in your post-production. So uh, we did have a boat going across the middle there a wee tick ago, but I'm still going to go with this without the boat. Um, and this is what I would um, would do. I'd hold the camera vertically. I'd fix myself on a on a point somewhere out there in the distance, make sure I'm totally in focus. And we've got Mount Kaukau there, and I'd just take a shot there and just move across just a little bit and a little bit more 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 and a little bit more. And in each shot, there's a little bit of the preceding shot. And so when the software um, you get it into the software and it doesn't matter if it's Photoshop or something else, there's lots of stitching software around at the moment. Uh, the software all wor works it all out, it um, binds the images together and you'd think that I would be shooting a, a, a panorama as um, a horizontal shot or a series of horizontal shots. No, I don't do that because to shoot vertically, first of all you get a bigger file so you can do more things with it later and secondly it gives the software um, a little bit more latitude to, to choose what, it, what it's going to, to um, select as your, your final panorama and if you can give yourself a little bit more space on the, on the, um, on the sky and on, on the, the, the lower portion of the image I think that you'll, you'll come out trumps and, and you'll have a pretty cool little image. Just remember your exposure is really really important right through the image so keep an eye on your meter which is in your camera to make sure that you're, you're, you're balanced all the way through. You only need one bad shot in amongst that sequence and you are seriously stuffed.